My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about reeds versus um, rotary valves. So, reeds versus rotary. Right. So, this. Oh, so this is a. I'm well out of frame. There's a fire between us. So, where is your guy? That's better. Let's try that. So, reeds versus rotary valves. Um, so, really, what's happened is is that reeds have replaced reeds have replaced rotary valves for a couple of reasons. Um, there will be a one and a two, well, three parts to this. So, this is the introduction. We'll do reeds, and then we'll do rotaries or rotaries and reeds, depending on which way I record them. Um, so basically, this is just an introduction to how they work. So the way that rotary valves work, because that's the one that a lot of people might not be familiar with, is that you have an opening, and the opening can be any shape really-ish, and this opening is to your crankcase or what have you, and then what you do is you put a disc over it with a bearing in the middle, and then you have a, an opening window that matches your port in a sense. It depends, you can open it up so you get longer duration and stuff. And what happens is, is you have some kind of drive to this and you wing this around and when these two windows line up you have a carb on the front of this and I'll show you some pictures, it's a, it's a, a more difficult thing to understand. And what happens is, is as these two windows line up on top of each other then obviously you get flow through and so on. The rotary itself, the rotary valve itself is um, usually spring steel, it's usually very quite thin and you just wing this round and the reason why it's thin um, is basically so it's lightweight because you're obviously winging this thing round and um, that's basically that's just how that works, it's just aligning um, these windows. You can make modifications quite easily compared um, to other engines-ish because you can just start basically changing the profile of this of this window so you get different characteristics and stuff like that. However, this is a thing that's gone to a certain degree because you need to power this somehow and it needs to be timed with the crankshaft and that's a bit of a bad example. Usually it's a one-to-one, no, one -one. not usually, it is a one-to-one. -one. Um, but yeah, basically this is how you you know this is how you work it, and it means just more components because you've got this disc, the housing it incorporates, the bearings and so on, the actual belt or how you're going to drive it with a chain. The cool thing is some people have actually done twisted belts where they can actually twist it around the corner and put it on um, a different angle. You can actually have it on the front if you want. There's some examples of that. Uh, the problem is is you always need access to the. Uh, to the actual crankshaft so when it comes to single cylinders it's fine when it comes to multiple cylinders ah oh no it's absolutely horrible and it doesn't really work that well unless you've just basically got a, a, a twin cylinder but when you start getting to fours and all the rest of it it all gets horrible so it reads you have a port um, that ends like this and then you have a reed block and then you have just these petals that sit on the top, they're anchored at one end like this and basically they work on pressure differentials now these are either spring steel, you can use certain plastics you can use carbon fibre, you can use all sorts of materials it's basically, it needs to have a flexible, it has to have a, um, a, an ability to flex you wouldn't make them out of aluminium say, eh, I don't know if anyone's ever made them out of aluminium you wouldn't want to really, basically because of the fatigue of aluminium but um, usually it's spring steel or like I say something like carbon fibre or whatever because of the stiffness and they're basically like a one-way check valve our reeds um, I won't go into it too much, we'll do the reeds video about that but that's the difference between the two the reed blocks are very simple they weigh for call and it also, they're actually quite dynamic reeds in the fact that they can um, open at different times, they are variable to a certain degree um, it's just if the pressure inside the crankcase is lower than what's outside then it will open um, and you don't have to do anything to change it it's a physical based process it's physical based timing if you want to call it that 
So you reads are really simple, um, really straightforward, really cheap, really easy to replace. They work, they work quite dynamically versus the rotary. So the rotary valve has kind of just been wiped out completely because it is fixed, um, it requires more components, it costs more and so on. But we will actually look about um, how the reed operates in the next video and we will look about the rotary and how that actually operates and what you can do to kind of, you know, um, optimise that kind of design and so on. And we'll talk about more about multiple cylinders when we do the reeds and stuff. Um, the move to reeds was uh, when 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 um, all the outboard motors, you know, wanted to go multiple cylinder and stuff like that. That's basically where they required, you know, like your Evinrude V6 and stuff like that. You can't do it without reeds. If you try to do it with rotary, it would be a complete, absolute fucking mess. And uh, it, like I say, it's not as dynamic as reeds are. Hope that makes sense. Like I say, this is just an introduction. We'll go into each one in its own video because they both basically require their own video trying to switch from one to another makes your head go a bit mushy hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit